Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Books You Can Sink Your Teeth Into podcast. I'm your host, Granite A. Miller, and we are continuing on our study of the Civil War of the United States. And uh, we're still pre-Civil War right now, and we are reviewing the Fields of Blood book. Um, This is going to be our third week uh, reviewing this book, and it'll be our last week. It is uh, a book that I cannot recommend enough if you're a Civil War buff or just a history buff. Um, It is so well written. And it helps really lay the landscape of what happened prior uh, to the war, prior to the Civil War, and uh, highly recommended. So let's get uh, let's get caught up where um, and get started this week. Um, as we know, Congress back in the 1830s, to 1860s, had two parties. Ah, oh, what do you know? <laughs> but it wasn't the Republicans, Democrats. It was the Whigs and the Democrats. Now, the Republicans, where well, the Whigs were pretty much going to be the Republicans. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, so, uh, so we had the Whigs and the Democrats. Now, both parties had a Northern faction and a Southern faction. And, their, and, and it, it seemed, as we talked about in our previous episode, that it was a constant, North was constantly giving to appease the Southern uh, the Southern congressman who uh, demanded that, you know, this is slavery is slavery. We, it's not, we don't want to talk about it. And they instituted the gag order. And that's where we left off last time. And a gag order is basically Congress would not talk about slavery at all or anything, any petition, anything came up that had to do with slavery gagged. And so great for the, great for the Southern congressman, right? You don't have to deal with the questions anymore. Not so good uh, for the North because the Northern congressmen felt that their rights were being uh, impeded upon their right to speech. And a number of congressmen, I got two in particular, really spoke out against it. Um, John Quincy Adams, uh, former president, was one who really was loud and vocal uh, about this. And uh, another man named uh, Congressman Benton was another. The, and so these, uh, so there were a lot of people who were not happy with this gag order. And why were they being gagged? Because we didn't want to talk about slavery. We didn't want to upset the Southern congressman. Now, we know that this got really hotly contested. Um, and in fact, uh, it was it was getting so bad that the Southern states started to say, hey, you guys don't follow what we're going to do. We're, we're leaving. We're going to issue. And at that point, it was a threat. Uh, at that point in time, you know, there wasn't real, uh, the, keeping the union was was, in, was was really the goal for everyone, but the, these threats started to, started to surface. And we take a now look, we're going to go back down to Texas, right? And let's see what's going on in Texas. So there was a movement, as we know, Texas became its own country, the country of Texas in 1830-something or another, 1835, I think. And... Uh, and the reason was that the, the Texas, so, so just north of the Rio Grande, uh, that 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 whole, you know, where the Gulf Coast is, uh, Houston and et cetera, that, that area area there, there a lot of Anglo's coming in, a lot of Anglican families, a lot of them uh, Protestant, of I wouldn't say Quaker, but you know, quite you know, traditional uh, people of the earth families, uh, very hardy, um, they moved in. Why did they move in? Well, we talked about the before, the uh, Indian raids of the Apaches that were then followed by, even worse, the Comanches uh, that just made the place unlivable. The Comanches would swoop through and just destroy and everything and, you know, the, the kidnap uh, children. I mean, that's, it was, it was, it was rough. It was rough. In fact, there's a couple stories, a couple books, and we 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 may look at one of these. There's two um, famous books uh, by men uh, who were who were young, you know, like nine, ten when they were kidnapped uh, by Indians. One was a gentleman named um, what was it, Herman something or another. Uh, last name was Herman. He was a kidnapped. Uh, uh, no, first name Herman Lehman. That's right. He was kidnapped by the Apaches. And then uh, he eventually then got adopted by the Comanches, and he spoke fluent uh, uh, Apache and Comanche. He lived the lifestyle, 
and he was then um, the army saw him and they when actually sorry going off to- topic here but he was with uh, with quantum Parker when he was bringing in the last of the Comanche uh, uh, Indians to the reservation and Herman was with them and uh, some soldiers saw this you know white fellow with uh, with the Indians and they eventually found his mother and they reunited and he you know but he would go and he would go and be with um those shows like uh, you know Wild Bill and and then you know and we'd jump on a horse go and shoot a buffalo and jump off cut it eat the liver big was huge I mean very popular We'll talk about the. There's a couple books that we can we can look at that uh, discuss life. But getting back, the reason that whole area, you know, southern that uh, southeast Texas was uninhabited with the Comanches, and the Comanches had pushed the Apaches uh, to the mountains, and they ruled the plains. That's why they're called the Lord of the Plains, Lords of the Plains. Um, and so very, you know, that and so the Anglo's came in, started to to. You know, build up cities and Mexico, which owned the territory at the time. Mexico was like, "Look, that we don't have slaves." In eighteen twenty nine, Mexico abolished slavery, right? But these people coming in, they you know, a lot of them owned slaves, and so they're bringing in. Uh, the Mexicans were also Catholic, okay, and these these Anglo's were Protestant, and then the Mexicans wanted everybody to speak Spanish, and of course the Anglo's coming in spoke English, so. A lot of friction, right? Uh, so you had slaves bringing these, these Anglo's bringing in slaves, um, speaking English and not adhering to Catholicism. So you know Mexico wasn't wasn't happy uh, about this, and the United States uh, didn't really want to annex Texas because we had talked about the balance of power that was in Congress at that point in time. Uh, if they were, and then if 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 Texas came in. Would it be a slave state or would it be a free state? So those are huge questions because that new state then would give you know one of those um, one of those parties uh, stronger representation. So uh, there was a, a lot of uh, Congress is dragging their feet. So Texas became an independent country. When they did, Mexico attacked, right? And we know about the Alamo. Uh, at this point, then the U.S. Yeah, entered into war with Mexico, so the Mexican-American War, and this is where just we'll just talk about this real quick. Um, all of the generals that were famous in the Civil War, uh, Lee, Grant, Sherman—I mean, they were uh, et cetera, et cetera. They were all uh, in pretty much in this war. They were maybe not have high ranks because a lot of them just came out of West Point, but uh, they were all—they all knew each other, and they all fought together. Uh, in the Mexican-American War, which the U.S. won. And so Texas and a bunch of other territory was granted, given, well, well you just paid for it, so it wasn't granted, but uh, so the U.S. Um, was given a lot of territory. And it's important for us to understand this because, first of all, Grant in his book says the Mexican-American War was really the start of the Civil War. And he, I think he's right by saying that because this is now we get all this land that uh, that the U.S. Uh, now becomes part of U.S. territory that was formerly Mexico. And what's it going to be? Free or slave owning? And so these new states are being created. It was a huge question, right? And so a lot of the congressmen said, oh, it's states' right to decide. Right, so we had Kansas, we had Missouri, we Texas. It was a state's right to decide. Well, how do you decide? We gotta have gotta have people. So if you're you're you know free, if you're if you don't want slavery, you want I think it's called freeholders. Um, you need more people than the slave owning people do, right? So there's a huge influx of of people, which uh, which was bad news for the native populations because now. Diseases were being spread, and that's what decimated the native populations. And a lot of these uh, Anglo's uh, were, were moving in. We can see in Kansas and Missouri the wars, the the, skirm- the skirmishes that were going on uh, back and forth. And the movie, The Outlaw Josie Wales, uh, with Clint Eastwood, really kind of depicts that. That's you know just pre-Civil War, and that's really 
you watch that movie, you can kind of hear like that's what they're talking about um, when you know the granny was you know talking bad smack about you know the so and so. But that's what that's how it was, and um, that was really what was leading up now to uh, to the break up of the union, and so this gets us now uh, up to the point where the Whig Party just they weren't they were no longer they got they got so divided over this with the North and the South Whigs, and then you know the new states coming in and the Whigs just disintegrated, and. Out of those separate, and they, they were different like northern Whigs and independent uh, freeholding Whigs and southern slave-owning Whigs, etc. They all started getting different names. And that's where the Republican Party was born out of that, was one of those factions. And so we um, are leading up uh, to the uh, presidential election, right? So uh, we're just about there. And it was really when the Republicans... Um, had Lincoln elected, that was the the breaking point. And that's where we're going to pick up next time. Uh, is the uh, Republican election Abraham Lincoln right? Uh, we'll talk about uh, John Brown uh, and what the actions there and why was it that now the the Southern states said that's it, we're done, right? They've lost a lot of power. Uh, the, the Whig Party breaking up. There was you know, and the tide was turning against them. Uh, and we'll start to uh, explore that, and we'll start about uh, we'll talk about Charleston, and the uh, and the uh, Fort Sumner here, and, and what happened. So, hope you enjoyed this uh, episode. This is so. Uh, next next time we are going to be um, we'll be uh, starting on Ulysses S. Grant's book. Uh, so if you want to read that, uh, his uh, biography, and uh, we'll. We're still going to probably dive into Field of Blood a couple times here and there because it's such a good, excellent resource. Um, so we'll go back and forth. But all right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you all so much for, for watching and listening. If you know somebody who's interested in Civil War, tell them about the show. Um, you know, got like a whole, what is it, six viewers? <laughs> but that's okay. You're here. That's all I care about. So let's um uh, get ready now for for the man of the hour, Count Vlad. Yes, he just is such a, um, yeah, he made a couple comments last week. He's carrying the show, right? And I gotta disagree uh, with him. I feel that this is, this. people come and watch the show for this part, right? The, the intellectual side, the reviewing of the books, right? They're not listening to his nonsense. He's telling vampire jokes and getting calls from his buddies and, you know, talking about his girl, living girlfriend, partner, and stuff like that. It's like, you know. <laughs> All right, everybody. Count Vlad's up next. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll talk. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye. Good evening, everyone. It is I, Count of Vlad, and I am a vampire. And to welcome to my castle. It is a beautiful night. Oh, I eat a candle. Yes, stay close to the candle. The stairway can be treacherous. <laughs> you remember that scene? That was brilliant. So, it is a nice and beautiful evening here. We got the candle, and I am uh, just uh, so happy oh, that you're here with me tonight. And so, let's get uh, down to business. Let's get down to business. The Count, you know, that uh, I was trying to fly home. I was, you know, I changed into a bat, right? And I was flying home. And uh, this witch, uh, she got in front of me. And she's going so slow. And I was so mad. I was like, come on, I'm trying to fly here. Would you speed it up, you old witch? And then she went slower. And it just really got on the account of last of nerve. So I, uh, I, I said, to my, I bonked my bat horn at her. And then, you know, she uh, looked out the window and then she said, bite me. And I said, oh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> oh, oh, the counter making a funny one. <laughs> yes. My comedian is going good. You know, then she said to me, she said, my boyfriend is a bodybuilder 
And I said, oh, that's good, because I like my blood strong. <laughs> oh, the county cracks himself up. Okay, so enough of that. Um, You know, I heard that this Grant Meader, he is again criticizing the Count. The Count who brings in all the draws, you know, bringing in everyone into the show. And you know, he's talking about the Civil War and the book, The Field of Blood. Oh, I like the word. I like it, Fields of Blood. Yes, that's a good title. I like it. But he's reading about the Congress and the Whigs and the Democrats. And, the, and you're falling asleep. I mean, come on, Grante Miller. Can you please talk about something that like, people want to hear about? They want to hear about, for example, my life, right? My life. I, I'm uh, with the uh, Count, the Countess, um, the beautiful Queen Lilith, and she is doing very good. Um, in fact, the second book of Raven Scythe, you know, the book that uh, nobody's read, <laughs> has a new part two coming out. And Queen Lilith is a featured in it, and she's very happy. She wants to be in a movie. Yes, and and I talked to the authors, the um, the Bed and Flowers, and the Grande Miller, and uh, they they actually said, yeah, Count, maybe we could use you in our next book. Uh, so so maybe the Count will get put in. Oh, my fingers are crossed. Maybe me and Lilith can be together. I don't know. We'll see. So, uh, anyway, uh, I was talking to Count Fangora, and uh, he was telling me about this new podcast, about this uh, Sean Connery is doing a podcast from beyond the grave. So, of course, the Count is interested, right? And, uh, and it's, a, it's about the books, and like the bookshelf and something. Let's take a quick listen to it, just the beginning. Here we go. Good evening, everybody. This is Connery, Sean Connery. I have a special guest tonight on Top Shelf Books, and his name is Roger Moore. If you remember him from the Bond movies, yes, he was another Bond. He didn't do a bad job. He brought a little more humor to the role, where I myself was gritty. And I used to slap the women, because I'm Connery, Sean Connery. I don't know, you know, the Count, uh, he likes uh, Roger Moore, likes him very much. Okay, so that was pretty good, right? I can't play the whole thing because of copyright infractions. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, yeah, we like it, right? We talk about Roger Moore and John Connery. They're all ghosts. They're all talking from the grave. So I think it's a good book, good, good podcast. So Grant A. Miller, why don't you take a little hint and... Uh, start to uh, make your podcast more interesting, right? And then, you know, because the the count, I can only do so much, right? I, I'm here, I do my best, I try to bring the people in, etc., etc. So, um, and the other thing that uh, Grant A. Miller should, uh, should start to work on is uh, his paintings. And so he's doing these paintings, and I have one here. Look at this. Look, look at this. This is the one that Grant A. Miller did. And I'm like, what the heck is this? You got green fluorescent and black. It's just like, this is terrible. Nobody wants to see this, right? They want to see the artwork, the real artwork that has a meaning and a feeling. You know, there's no feeling in this. Where's the feeling? Oh, I see a tree. Oh, oh, oh. oh there's branches. Oh, 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 there's some yellow stuff on the ground. Oh, 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 oh. it's so artsy, fartsy. Yeah, so Grande Miller, nobody cares, right? So give it up and just let the, the count take over. I'll help. I'll do it all, you know? I will make everything for you okay. You just got to trust in the count. That's right. So, um, you know, I was going to... Uh, to say to Grande Miller, I could help with the editing of the new book, right? The new Ra Raven's Eyes Part 2. Um, but, uh, you know, the Count, uh, he, he, he likes typos very much. Get it? <laughs> Type O. <laughs> oh, the Count's just got him one after the other, just zinging him out there. Okay, so. Hope you enjoyed this. Now, 
I will say that the Grand Dame Miller is like some kayak uh, videos, which are very fun. Although one, it goes on for like an hour and a half, and it's just him paddling, and it's just like, oh my gosh, who wants to watch that? But he's got some shorter ones now, where he's uh, kayaking around the town, so it's pretty good. I hope you like that. So, okay, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in, listening to the count, and. We hope you have a wonderful holiday weekend, and we will see you soon. Until then, I'm going to turn into a bat after I say adieu.